Hello class, welcome to the final segment in lecture 21. And in this final segment, we're going to take a, one more, uh, take a look at one more parameterization of buoyancy slash instability in the atmosphere. And that parameterization was what's referred to as the lapse rate, the environmental lapse rate. So you may have covered this in intro one, the uh, class from the previous semester. A lapse rate is defined at the rate at which the temperature decreases with height. So if you've got a large value of lapse rate, that means your temperature decreases very rapidly as you go up in the atmosphere. And if you've got a small value of lapse rate, then your temperature decreases more gradually as you go up in the atmosphere. And mathematically, we can represent this as follows. So the temperature at some height z is equal to the temperature that we started with minus uh, lowercase gamma times z, where lowercase gamma represents the environmental lapse rate. So just like with the uh, just like with the derivation of the buoyancy equation from segment one, we're going to keep the parcel in the environment as two distinct entities. And in the case of the environment, we're going to use lowercase gamma to represent the rate at which the environmental temperature decreases with height. So this is the uh, this is what you would measure. Uh, say if you were to launch a weather balloon, when you take a when you sample a temperature at each level in the atmosphere, this is the result that you would actually measure uh, from that weather balloon as it's rising up in the atmosphere. So let's say your environmental lapse rate decreases at a rate of 6 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So that means that if you go up one kilometer, your temperature is going to decrease by 6 degrees Celsius from its starting value. And if you go up two kilometers, it will have fallen by 12 degrees Celsius uh, compared to a starting value, and then so on and so forth. And for the parcel, here we're going to represent the uh, lapse rate for the air parcel is capital gamma. And again, we're going to use the same convention that we used in segment one, where the prime that will uh, symbol here will be used to denote that we're talking about the air parcel. And this uh, value of gamma here is not something that we can actually observe. We cannot sample the temperature of air parcels, try as we might, as they're rising up into the atmosphere. So this is something that we have to derive from a more theoretical basis. We have to take a look at if we, we basically have to ask the question, if we were to lift an air parcel up, how much, by how much would its temperature decrease as it continues traveling up in the atmosphere? So again, this lowercase gamma is representing it represents how much uh, how rapidly the environmental temperature decreases with height, and this uppercase gamma represents how rapidly our air parcels temperature will decrease with height. And typically, uh, the starting value, the starting temperature of the air parcel is the same as the starting temperature of the environment. So that's going to be an, a, an approximation that will come to play a little bit, little bit later on. But you may also remember from the equation from buoyancy that the acceleration of an air parcel is proportional to the difference between the air parcel temperature and the environmental temperature. So if we take these expressions for air parcel temperature and environmental temperature and plug them into this expression, then we get that the acceleration is proportional to this. And again, we'll apply that assumption that I just mentioned, assume that the uh, environment and air parcel the, uh, the, they originate from the same location, so they have roughly the same temperature, which is usually at ground level. Typically, our reference temperature T0 here is something that happens at ground level, which in the case of the parcel in the environment is roughly the same value. And if we make that assumption, we get the following expression. So T0 minus capital gamma Z minus T0 plus lowercase gamma Z, just applying some algebra here. And then we get that the acceleration is proportional to uh, this expression. So minus parcel, the t knots cancel out, so we're left with minus uh, parcel lapse rate times height plus lowercase gamma, which is environmental lapse rate times height. And if we do some algebra and rearrange that, we get that the acceleration is, a, is proportional to the uh, the proportional to the, the difference between the environmental lapse rate and the air parcels lapse rate. And physically, this makes sense because if the environmental lapse rate is decreasing much faster than the parcels lapse rate, then the upward accelerations are going to be much more intense. And that's going to be represented as a higher value of lowercase gamma. So if the temperature in the environment decreases much more rapidly than the air parcels environment, gamma, lowercase gamma will be large, but uppercase gamma will be relatively small. So that's going to give you a positive value of acceleration, which is going to give you a positive buoyant force or an air parcel that's going to want to move upward. And again, this is a uh, this is a, something that we kind of just illustrated mathematically. If the environmental lapse rate is very large, which uh, another term for that is a steep lapse rate, then that means you're going to have a much stronger buoyant force, which means you're going to have a much stronger upward acceleration, which means potentially much stronger updraft speeds. Excuse me. And also, 
uh, usually when you have uh, when you have steep environmental lapse rates, that's going to be something that's much more likely to give you a fat cape profile, which again is something we talked about in the previous segment when we looked at how not all cape is created equal. But in this case, we have uh, so in the case of a strong uh, steep environmental lapse rate, you tend to have a more of a fat cape profile. So you have uh, more you have a more cape over uh, less of a less depth in the atmosphere, which is going to be much more likely to give you stronger updrafts. In fact, when you're trying to diagnose updraft speed, using the environmental lapse rate is a much better way of diagnosing the potential for strong updrafts than using CAPE. CAPE just tells you how much buoyancy is present in the atmosphere. Is there a lot of buoyancy? Is there not so much buoyancy? But that doesn't really tell you a whole lot about what kind of updrafts you can expect, what sort of updraft speeds you can expect. Uh, using the environmental lapse rate is a much better way to, to, of predicting how much, uh, how much of an updraft your storms are going to have in that environment. And shallow lapse rates, which are lower values of lowercase gamma here, that's going to be much more likely, much more likely to give you a skinny cape profile, which is probably going to give you weaker updrafts. And again, that kind of stems back from the assumptions that we made, highlighted in segment two, some of the forces that we neglected, and that in turn goes into our equation for cape and also our buoyancy equation. But now you might be wondering what sort of values of environmental lapse rate should we be concerned with? Typically, values of less than six degrees C per kilometer, usually the atmosphere is pretty stable at that point. You don't expect a whole lot in the way of strongness of your convection, strongness of your thunderstorms if your environmental lapse rate is less than six degrees C per kilometer. It's not impossible to get a strongness of your thunderstorm in such a lapse rate, but usually if you've got convection in that lapse rate, it's either uh, just regular showers or some sort of tropical cells, which don't produce a whole lot in the way of severe weather. But uh, usually a value under 6 degrees C per kilometer is not very much cause for concern. As far as severe weather is concerned, uh, flooding might be a different story. But as far as the potential for large hail damaging winds and tornadoes, usually a lapse rate of under 6 degrees C per kilometer means there's probably not going to be much threat for either of those three things. And then values between about 6 and 6.5 degrees C per kilometer, uh, that's a pretty shallow lapse rate, but you might have an unstable atmosphere in, in a lapse rate, in those sort of lapse rate values. So uh, you may not get severe thunderstorms, but you might get some stronger thunderstorms that might be producing some stronger, uh, some uh, maybe some half inch or penny size hail, or maybe some gusty outflow winds. Right around 6.5 to 7 degrees per kilometer, that's when you start becoming a little bit more worried about hail. That's when you might have a lapse. Uh, that's when you might have lapse rates that might support strong enough outdrafts to support more of a hail threat. But it's still this is still on the lower end. If you've got lapse rate values under 7 degrees per kilometer, that's still on the lower end as far as hail is concerned. So you're probably not going to get a whole lot of really big hail uh, from lapse rate values under 7 degrees per kilometer. 7 to 8 degrees per kilometer. That's where things change a little bit. Uh, assuming you've got the right thunderstorm mode, so again, assuming you're going to have supercells, if you see lapse rate values of 7 to 8 degrees per kilometer, that's when you might have to start worrying about uh, significant hail, and the significant hail is defined as anything over 2 inches in diameter. And also, this assumes that the ambient wind profile is favorable for supercells and that you're going to have isolated storm modes. Again, these are just rules of thumb. These aren't set in stone golden rule numbers. These are just uh, re so these are just expectations that you might have if you see values like this on, say, a severe weather day. And then 8 to 9 degrees C per kilometer, that's when you should become very worried about hail, <laughs> usually. If you're going to have if you're gonna have supercell thunderstorms in an environment like this with these sort of lapse rates, uh, those updrafts are going to be very robust and they're going to be supporting some very significant hail. Uh, potentially three, maybe even four inches in diameter if the other environmental factors are conducive enough. So right about in this range is where you can expect to have some very robust updrafts. And if you happen to see lapse rates over nine degrees C per kilometer, happens on some rare occasions, but if you get some sort of lapse rate like that, um, those hail sizes might be quite large. <laughs> At that point, you can probably expect hail, uh, the most intense supercells, if you've got supercells, uh, in an environment where the lapse rates are this steep, you're probably talking hailstones of four inches in diameter, diameter maybe larger than that. Uh, I, you don't want to be under a thunderstorm if you see lapse rates like this, unless you hate your car, then by all means. But most people don't hate their cars that much. So if you see lapse rates like this, uh, keep your car far away from those thunderstorms because they're going to be producing some monstrous hail if they are, in fact, supercells. 
And a lot of times, we don't use just any uh, regular lab straight to diagnose the hail threat or the potential for significant updrafts. Usually, you'll look at the lab straight from about 700 millibars to about 500 millibars. Usually, that value of lab straight is going to be very telling as to what sort of hail sizes you can expect from uh, any supercells that might be going up in such an environment. But that's going to do it for this uh, last segment on Lecture 21. And in the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit about thunderstorm types and how to diagnose thunderstorm types using photographs, uh, thunderstorm behavior using photographs. So with that, I will see you all in the next lecture.